Hi everybody. Um, here's a handy, a couple of handy features you may not have tried. You're uh, probably familiar with standard fusion drag and drop actions like union, intersection, subtraction, and the the corresponding new branch options. But uh, what about these last three options? Let's take a look at the uh, kind of a fun one: uh, create non-fusion duplicate. Selecting that creates a copy of our source mesh and makes it a child of that source mesh in Moto's item list, as you can see there. And that duplicate mesh is, uh, is not a uh, fusion source mesh, it's just a regular mesh. So now, um, because that's a child of the subtractive source mesh, when I move that subtractive source mesh, the effect is like the, uh, that non-fusion duplicate is automatically carving out a cavity for itself wherever it goes. And uh, naturally, that will work with translation, rotation, scaling. Um, and I can also independently scale the duplicate, uh, creating a gap of any width between the mesh and that uh, cavity. This kind of setup uh, takes that free immutability you have with fused meshes and extends it uh, to cases of related but non-fusing meshes, you know, perfect for things like models that have fitted, interlocking, or uh, slotted elements. Those fits and interlocks and such are automatically maintained as you design. So uh, next we're going to look at another uh, drag and drop option that allows you to replace uh, any existing source mesh with uh, any other mesh, just uh, swapping it out in place uh, on the fly. And I'm, I'm kind of uh, setting up a similar a relationship, but uh, that's not at all required. It just uh, happens to be what I want in this case. Uh, the same sort of cutout that I have with the cone I want to have with a cylinder instead. I'm hiding that non-fusion uh, duplicate of the cone just so we can see more clearly what happens when we replace here. So I just uh, drag and drop the cylinder onto the cone and choose uh, replace with dropped mesh. So there you have it, uh, the same setup uh, we had before. We've simply replaced the cone mesh with a cylinder. So uh, I'll finish up here with another look at the non-fusion duplicate option uh, and doing something a bit different this time by scaling the non-fusion cylinder along its long axis. With that, um, we get a cut that extends beyond the regular mesh and it, it creates uh, all sorts of interesting effects. This is great for things like uh, recessed buttons and uh, slotted mechanical parts and uh, things of that nature. And there's some fun things that can be done when the uh, fitted elements come from two separate fusion items. And uh, that ties in with some things that can be done in the schematic. And uh, we'll be looking at that in another video. All right. Thanks.